Hi, my name is David Buer with Leviton Manufacturing. Today we're going to get right into the heart of the Piccolo Scan console and run you through several how-to's that teach you how to do some very basic programming. Let's get started. Before we get started with anything in the console, it's important to make sure that we're going to output the data that we've seen. The first thing to do to check that is called the Grand Master. The Grand Master is this fader here that has the GM on top of it. What that is, is it allows us to proportionally master the entire output of the console. So that means all lighting control data that is leaving this console is filtered through the level of the Grand Master fader. You'll notice right now, it's all the way down at zero. That means that it doesn't matter what I do with the console, nothing's going to output. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that it's all the way up at full, ensuring that I'm going to get the full output capability of the console. In addition to that, above the Grand Master fader, we have the blackout button. You're going to want to make sure that the LED is in the off state. Now the blackout button is used when you instantly want to stop all output from the console. You push it, the red LED turns on, and all output stops from the console. Pushing it a second time resumes output. So you'll want the Grand Master at full and the blackout button in the off state. The first thing we're going to walk you through today is how to set channel levels from the Piccolo Scan console. Now the information we share with you today on the Piccolo Scan applies to the Piccolo equally as well. It's not until we get into the automated device portion of programming where we start to see how the Piccolo Scan differs from the on other consoles in the line. We're going to start right here with the channel faders. It's your primary means of interacting with the console, which is really all about setting channel levels. When you set channel levels to a level, the fixtures or devices that are attached to those channels uh, go up or go down corresponding to how you set that channel. To raise the channel of, or the level of channel zero, we're going to grab fader one, which is currently set to channel one, and just raise it up. Now you see me moving the fader here on the console, I'll put it at about 50%. You also can see it displayed on the monitor where you see channel 1 is set to, right now, 54%. So you'll see those change as we're moving channels up and down. So we're going to put channel 1 at full. We'll set channel 2 at full. Then I'm going to set channel 3 and channel 4 right at about 50%. Now if you're watching the monitor, you'll see that I've really got channel 3 set at 51% and channel 4 set at 58%. So we're not exactly at 50%. I'll show you how to take care of that later. But for now, we're at about 50%. One of the advantages of being able to set the channel levels from faders is you get quick visual indication of what level the channel's at. For example, I can see that channels 1 and 2 are at about full because the faders are near the top. Channels 3 and 4 are at about 50% because they're in the middle. And the rest of the channels are at zero because they're all the way at the bottom. It's just one of the useful things about uh, using faders to set channel levels. I see exactly the same information on the monitor itself. Right now, you see these faders are controlling channels 1 through 12. Now this bottom row of faders is currently put into submaster mode. I see the red LED is lit as an S telling me it's submasters, so it's not accessible to me for channels. I'll show you how to change console modes later. But right now, the top row is set to 1 through 12. One of the advantages of the Piccolo series of consoles is that every channel that the console accesses is available via fader. I do that by multiple pages. Right now, I'm in page 1, which is channels 1 through 12. This button here is the page button. By pushing it one or more times, I can access the other pages in the console. So I'm going to push it one, once. You'll notice, instead of having the channel 1 LED lit, the channel 13 LED is lit, telling me that these are now channels 13 through 24. And you'll notice, sure enough, if I come grab the fader, this one is set to 28, 20. And I raise it, I'm actually setting the level of channel 20. Here's 21, and this one over here is 22. It brings up, though, this one is set to channel 13. If I move this fader, is channel 13 going to go up to full? Of course not. The Piccolo series of console uses what we call a match and take control philosophy of setting channel levels. 
So right now, this channel fader isn't attached to 1, it's not attached to 13, it's not attached to anything. In order to get control with this fader, I first need to match the level of the channel that the fader is currently controlling, which is 13. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower this down to 0. Now, as I'm lowering it, I want you to listen for an audible beep and also notice on the display the red bar flash at the bottom, which is going to tell me I've matched the level. There, you hear the beep. Now I have control of channel 13 with this fader and you can see it raising and lowering over there on the, on the uh, monitor. Same is true for the other channel levels. So I've now shown you how to set channel levels from the faders. This really is an iterative process that you'll go through until all of the channels in your scene are set to the level that you'd like them to be. There's more than just channel faders used as a mechanism to uh, set channel levels, however. We also have here in the middle of the console, we have the keypad. What I'm going to do with the keypad is it allows you to set channel levels via a command line or more of a traditional command line syntax. To do that, you start by pushing the channel button, which tells the console that you're about to enter a string or a command line to set channel levels. And you can see that it shows right here on the display, channel. I'm going to say channel 1, channel 5, and channel 12. I'm going to set at 75%. And if you can see in the monitor, you'll see channels 1, 5, and 12 are all now showing at 75%. Now remember earlier I told you that I would show you how to set channels at an exact level. The keypad is the simplest way to do that. I've shown you by using the channel level or pressing the channel button multiple times, you can gang multiple channels together. In my example that I just programmed, I did channel 1, 5, and 12. You can do them one at a time. For example, I could say channel 30 at 25%, which addresses just one channel at a time. If, however, you have a long string of channels that you want to control, you can use the through functionality. For example, I'm going to say channel 1 through 48 at 35 percent. Now all of those channels are going to go to 35 percent. Another command we give you is accept. It allows you to set exceptions to the current range. For example, I could say channel 1 through 48 except 5 through 20 at 90 percent. And you can see everything except for channels 5 through 20 have now gone to 90 percent. So through the command line and the command line interface, you can do some very complex channel strings and set different ranges of channels to levels very quickly. One of the things that I find myself doing periodically through programming is needing just to clear out all of the channel levels. To do that, you just plus the reset button, which is going to fade everything down to zero that was currently selected. If you want to do everything that's in the active scene, you just do a double click on reset and that will bring everything down. I've shown you how to set channel levels from the faders. I've also shown you how to set channel levels from the keypad. So just to review, I'm going to say channel 1 through 10 at 50 percent. Then I'm going to set channels 15 through 24 at full. To set channel levels at full, you just double click the at button. So I'm going to say channel 15 through 24 and then double click the at. You'll notice on the display that each channel level now shows FF beneath it. That's our shortcut for meaning the channels at full. Now, one of the other ways that you can use to modify channel levels is with the encoder right here in the middle of the display. One of the advantages of modifying channel levels from the encoder is it allows you to raise or lower the channel levels from their current position. So right now you'll see that I have two series of channels selected on the console. I've got channels 1 through 10 in a darker red and channels 15 through 24 in a little bit brighter red or more of a salmon colored red. 
those salmon colored channels are the ones that I'm actually going to modify with the encoder when I turn it. Right now I'm going to grab it, rotate to the left, and you'll see that I'm actually lowering those channels or rotate to the right and I'm raising those channels. Pretty basic, I understand. Now what I'm going to do, however, is I'm going to select all the channels 1 through 24 except 11 through 14 and watch what happens. So I chase a channel 1 through 24 except 11 through 14. Now I'm going to rotate this encoder wheel. You'll notice as I rotate it to the right, all of the channels raise from their current position and as I rotate it to the left, all of the channel lowers from their current position. So it's allowing me to incrementally increase or decrease the entire console output from each channel's own relative position. That's one of the really exciting things about the encoder or the relative encoder and how you can use it to adjust levels within your scene. That concludes this section of videos talking about how to set channel levels. Please check out our other videos and the next in the series which talks about console operating modes and how to record masters.